As you know, the 207th anniversary of the Battle of Medina Symposium, normally hosted by the Atascosa Historical Commission, was canceled this year due to COVID-19. I thought I would dust off and share with you the presentation I gave a few years ago, where we began to review and shed light on those whose lives have been forgotten and in the shadows due to passing of time and lack of interest in these lesser known personalities. To understand a historical event, it helps to understand those involved. We have heard over the past few years about the major figures involved in the Battle of Medina, players such as General Adedondo, Bernardo Gutierrez de Lara, Augustus McGee, Samuel Kemper, and a few others. Today, I want to share with you some information about some of the lesser known but equally important players. These players we find on both sides of the battle, the Royalists and the Republicans. Today, I want to start a conversation that I hope will span over the next few years so we can get a better, fuller understanding of the battle participants, their lives before and, for those fortunate enough, after the battle. Today, I want to dedicate my presentation to the memory of Larry Kirkpatrick. Larry introduced me to the Battle of Medina and the intriguing, never-ending search for the real location. One of the most impactful lessons Larry shared was the list of the 96 insurgents. The list, when he first introduced it to me, piqued my interest into this little-known battle. The more I read the list, the more interested I became. So, Larry, this presentation is for you. Before we dive into the lives of the royals and the rebels, let's do a quick review of the events that led up to the bloodiest battle in Texas history. El Grito from Father Hidalgo on September 16, 1810, was the start of much of the rebellion that followed. While military and its leadership from Bear went to address the uprising in Guanajuato, Juan Bautista de las Casas used this as an opportunity to conduct a coup and overthrow the Spanish governor. We will learn in a few minutes a little more about some of Casas' rebels and those who played a part in the counter-revolution that subsequently over overthrew Casas. In late 1812, the rebellion against the Spanish crown begins in La Bahia and finds its way into Bejar. The rebels would prove successful at the battles of Rocío. Gutierrez de Lara would declare independence from Spain in April of 1813. Succeed at the Battle of Alasan in June of 1813 before meeting their, their fate at the Battle of Medina in August. Of 1813. So who were some of the participants in the Battle of Medina? Today I will share with you a biographical sketch of eight individuals who played a role in the Battle of Medina. Four rebels or republicans and four loyalists. I'll use these flags to symbolize the individual's affiliation with the battle. The republicans or rebel biographies that we'll explore today are those of Marcelo Cervantes, Gavino Delgado, Joaquin Leal, and Clemente Delgado. The royalist biographies that we'll explore are those of Ignacio Gelizondo, Luis Galán, Ignacio Pérez, and José Antonio Salcedo. So without further ado, let's get started. Marcelo Cervantes is the first of the Republicans that we will explore today. He was born in San Fernando de Bejar on 17 February 1774 to Jose Bernardo Cervantes and Maria Luisa Berban. Marcelo's parents were Aideseños who were forced to relocate to Bejar following the Spanish crown's closing of Los Adais. His mother's maiden name wasn't originally Berban. No, it was Derban. Marcelo's maternal grandfather was Jean Bertiste Derban, a French explorer whose father was a business partner of Saint Denis. Jean Bertiste eloped with Los Aides 
Spanish commander's teenage daughter, Victoria Gonzalez. It's likely that Jean Baptiste's last name was Hispanicized from Derban to Berban to hide his French heritage from the Spanish officials afar. Can you imagine being the commander Gonzalez trying to explain to the governor or other officials why there's a Frenchman living in the Presidio? Oh, and the Frenchman is married to your daughter. Just goes to show you that love is much stronger than laws, policies, and the wills of two kings. Jean Baptiste's mother, Marcelo's great grandmother, was Jean Jean de la Grandière, a native from Louisiana's Chirimacha tribe. One of the 96 insurgents named by the Spanish government following the Battle of Medina, and after being hunted by Arredondo's forces, Marcelo fled Texas and died in Natchitoches, Louisiana, in November 1813, leaving behind his wife, Juana Martinez, and their seven children, one of whom was Jose Agapito Cervantes, one of Juan Seguin's troops during the 1835 Siege of Bejar. Lieutenant Colonel Ignacio Elizondo. Ignacio Elizondo was born in Salinas, Kingdom of Leon, in 1766. He was the fifth child born to Jose Elizondo and Maria Josefa de Villarreal. Elizondo's military career started with a local militia and then transitioned into the Spanish army around the Saltillo and Monclove area. Ignacio's father was a ranchero who owned several haciendas in and around present-day Garcia Nuevo León. Ignacio would eventually join the Casas Rebellion following Father Hidalgo's rito. His temporary allegiance to the rebellion caused him to trap Father Hidalgo, Ignacio Allende, and other rebels in March 1811 when he switched back to the royalist forces. Elizondo joined Arredondo's forces and met the Republicans at the Battle of Alasan. Following their success at the Battle of Medina, Arredondo ordered Elizondo to search out, capture, and execute the fleeing rebels. Elizondo and his army of 500 troops chased the Republicans as they sought refuge and, and captured hundreds of rebels, and Elizondo executed more than 70 himself. He would meet his fate by a sword of one of his own soldiers near present-day San Marcos in the latter part of 1813. Another rebel, wait, a royalist, no, 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 wait, 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 a rebel, was that of a Gavino Delgado. Gavino Delgado was a first generation Tejano, whose parents, Francisco Delgado and Catarina de los Santos, were among the original 56 Canary Islanders who established a civilian community known as La Villa de San Fernando. Gavino, like many of his Isleño cousins, married another Isleño descendant, Maria del Carmen Calvillo, the daughter of Ignacio Calvillo, and Canary Islander ranch Canary Islander Antonia de Rocha, and granddaughter of Francisco de Rocha and Juana Curbelo. Camino served as a Presidio soldier and was also a member of the local ayuntamiento, serving as an alcalde. In the early 1800s, Gavino would also serve as one of the first jueces de campo, or field judge where he was responsible for crop and ranch management, ensuring that many rancheros were following the rules and laws, especially those pertaining to proper branding and the management of livestock. During his service as West Campo, Gavino established eight ranching regions with a manager in each region. Gavino was one of Juan Bautista's rebels who aided him in the overthrowing of Governor Salcedo. The Delgado de la Casas relationship, however, would not last long, as Gavino abandoned de la Casas and joined nine others as part of a junta that quickly went to work to restore the Spanish crown's rules of law. Little is known about Gavino following the de la Casas revolution and counter-revolution. Like Gavino, many of his bejareños of that era changed loyalties with the ever-changing governments. Gavino died in 1825. His widow, Maria Calvillo, had inherited Rancho de las Cabras from her father and then expanded ranch holdings. Rancho de las Cabras was recently designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site as part of the San Antonio missions.
One of several staunch royalists during these turbulent times was Luis Galan. Luis Galan, originally from La Bahia, was a longtime Presidio soldier who in the late 18th century was appointed to oversee the large tobacco department of Bejar. Luis Galan also served as the head of the military hospital. For his faithful service to the crown, Galan was appointed to the junta that was commissioned following the counter-revolution that removed Casas and reinstated Salcedo as the governor of Texas. Following the Battle of Medina, Galan would continue to be called upon to serve his nation. Following Arredondo's orders, Ignacio Perez would tap Galan to identify captive rebels who deserved to be executed. Galan chose no one. Ever the faithful servant, Luis Galan would again follow Arredondo's orders by naming the insurgent rebels and taking inventory of their property for seizure. For his unending service, Arredondo bestowed upon Galan the honor of being appointed postmaster for Bejar. Galan died in 1820, and according to the San Fernando burial records, he would interestingly refuse last rites when offered. Another Canary Islander descendant who teamed up with the Republican Army of the North was Joaquin Leal. Born in 1746 to Bernardo Leal and Leonor Delgado, two of the original Canary Islanders that arrived 289 years ago. His mother is a daughter of the American Revolution patriot, recognized for her service as part of Galvez's cattle drives from 1778 to 1783. Joaquin, like many others in the Bear community, was a ranchero from Santa Rita de las Islas Ranch. He served on the local ayuntamiento as a regidor, or alderman. Following the catastrophic loss at the Battle of Medina, Joaquin, at age 67, led his fleeing family towards refuge and safety in Louisiana. Joaquin and a couple of his sons would find themselves captured by Lieutenant Colonel Elizondo. His sons would be executed near the Trinity River, while Joaquin, along with other heads of rebel families, was brought to Arredondo at Fort Trinidad, who executed Joaquin. Joaquin's remains, remained, remains were recovered from Trinidad six years later and interred at the Campo Santo. Juan Ignacio Perez is another royalist who supported the Spanish crown throughout all of the rebellious activity. Ignacio Perez was the third of 13 children born to Domingo Perez and Concepcion de Carvajal. Ignacio was a Presidio soldier and one of the first syndicos appointed by Gavino Delgado to help manage the ranch and farmlands. He served twice as primer alcalde and was a junta member as part of the counter-revolution overthrowing the rebel Juan Bautista de la Casas. As captain in the Spanish army during the Battle of Medina, Capitan Perez accompanied Lieutenant Colonel Elizondo as part of his army, chasing, capturing, and executing the rebels fleeing to Louisiana. Following the Battle of Medina, Ignacio Perez was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel and appointed as interim governor. He once owned the Spanish governor's palace, and today Toyota Manufacturing and the Land Heritage Institute currently sit on his previous land grant. Ignacio Perez died in 1823. Another unwavering royalist was found in Jose Antonio Salcedo. The son of Jose Antonio Salcedo and Margarita de Angulo, Jose was born in La Villa de San Fernando, November 20th, 1773. For an extensive biography that explains all of the accomplishments of Jose Antonio and how he was at the nexus of change, recommend reading Dr. De La Teja's Tejano Leadership Book. Jose Antonio was a farmer, rancher, and barrio commissioner. He was also the primer alcalde three times, twice before and once after the Battle of Medina. As a loyal Spanish citizen, General Arredondo appointed Jose Antonio, along with Luis Galan, to name the insurgents and inventory their property for seizure. Following the Battle of Medina, Salcedo was appointed as postmaster following his friend and compatriot, Luis Galan. He also served as Ayuntamiento secretary 
and also as the highest government official in the area, Jefe Político. José Antonio Salcedo died in 1832. The final bio that we'll explore today is that of Clemente Delgado. Clemente was born in October 1760 to Jacinto Delgado and Rita Alvarez Travieso. Both of his parents were children of the original 56 Canary Islanders. Clemente was also the first cousin to Gavino Delgado. He was in his early 20s. He was in his early 20s when he married Maria Etrude Salcedo, Jose Antonio Salcedo's sister. Clemente was a ranchero, like many of his family and other bejareños. Clemente was appointed as part of the municipal council following the Casas counter revolution and later served as primer alcalde in 1812, the beginning of the revolution that came to Texas and was part of the first government established by Gutierrez de Lara, immediately preceding the conflicts leading up to the Battle of Medina. Following the battle, his brother-in-law would name him as one of the 96 insurgents, which would result in all of his property being seized. A deportation order signed by Ignacio Perez was issued in 1814, banishing him to Monclova. However, his family is found in Louisiana. We're unsure as to where exactly Clemente was during his exile. The town council minutes from 1820 shows that Clemente was given the council's blessing and was deemed a good citizen. His La Villita property, acquired sometime around 1811, would be returned to him following his petition and then distributed to his children following his death in 1833. Today, when you stand in Maverick Plaza in La Villita, you'll be standing on Clemente's property. Also on his property, you'll find a, a historical marker dedicated to his granddaughter's husband, Texas revolutionary John W. Smith. I hope with today's presentation, you have a better understanding about the lives of the few participants of the Battle of Medina. We learned together that the life and times of those involved on both sides were challenging. Some of them, royalists, as well as Republicans, changing their loyalties from one to the other. The one thing that stuck with me when doing this research was the close connections several of these key players had with the other. Thanks to all, like Dr. Krem, Dr. De La Teja, Randall Tarin, and many others who have done such extensive research and then published that research and shared it with all of us. God bless each and every one of you. Please feel free to email me with any questions that you may have regarding this presentation. My email address is here. Until we meet again, take care, stay safe, and remember the Battle of Medina. Viva Texas!